Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Bare Knuckle 3, the Japanese version of Streets of Rage 3 for the Sega Mega Drive. Uh, for those of you guys that have never played a Streets of Rage game before, this is a beat-em-up or belt scroller as uh, people like to call them these days. Uh, it's a very, very fun game. Uh, kind of the black sheep of the family, in, in particular the Western version because of uh, a bunch of changes from the Japanese original. Um, but I have to say, after playing this for the first time this past week, I've, I think it's an excellent game. Uh, regardless of the version that you do play. Um, lots of new and interesting mechanics that make this sort of uh, stand out from the other two games uh, in the series and uh, definitely definitely worth playing. So what we're going to do here is go through the uh, the entire game from start to finish and I'm going to talk about mechanics and just talk about my strategies on boss fights and in particular situations and just talk about the mechanics and things like that. So for those of you guys that uh, you know are new to the game, hopefully this video should help you out and get you up to speed with it pretty quickly. Uh, if you decide to try it out uh, for yourself so uh, but yeah, this one is seen as the black sheep of the series uh, because of all the differences in the Western versions. Uh, in the Western versions, the difficulty is significantly higher. Uh, you've got uh, all sorts of character uh, costumes have been altered and the colors have been changed, things like that. Bosses have way more health in the US version. There are more enemies and enemies are more aggressive. Um, and uh, you've got even one boss that was chopped out as well. So there are other changes as well you can read all about online. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, if you're going to play one version of this game, I do recommend the Japanese version, especially for new players, because the game is significantly easier. I think it's much better balanced. Um, the game isn't padded out as much with all the extra enemies and extra uh, uh, boss health bars. Um, but I do still really appreciate the North American version, though, because uh, as someone that likes a challenge, going to that version after playing this Japanese version is pretty intense and, and pretty engaging because I have to really, really be on my feet in that game and think on my toes. Uh, Whereas this version, I got a one credit clear in my second try ever. Um, so that really goes to show like the, the, you know, the difficulty difference between the two versions. But if you want the most balanced version, the Japanese version is it. And uh, so, it, you know, I, I would recommend starting off with that if you want to have a good time. Uh, the North American version is still fun, but it's so intense you might not have a good time. The Japanese version, though, is a good time. Definitely worth playing. And uh, I think a worthy follow-up to uh, the previous games in the series. I, I still think I prefer Streets of Rage 2 over this, but th what I love about the Streets of Rage games is they all have a very particular unique feel, and they all kind of stand on their own as really solid beat-em-ups, and Part 3 is no exception, regardless of the version that you play. So, uh, But with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game and get this thing rolling and uh, I'm not going to bother with the options menu uh, it's everything's on the default difficulty setting uh, so the normal difficulty and uh, yeah so we have four different characters we can choose from here uh, including the new character Zahn uh, Sammy is uh, skate in the western release and of course Axel and Blaze are still here uh, so what I'm going to do is actually do a, a Blaze playthrough here and um, thanks to a uh, tip from a fellow viewer, you can actually get some hidden items here right at the very beginning of this first level. So we're going to actually do that first things first. So we get some points and then a free extra life. So one of the biggest changes uh, in Streets of Rage 3 compared to Part 2 is that you can now run in the game. So by double tapping forward, you can actually dash and you can do longer jump kicks. Uh, you can press the uh, the attack button to do a special running attack version of your forward forward attack which is quite nice. Another change is your specials from Streets of Rage 2. Uh, the A button special would uh, take away health from you in Streets of Rage 2, so you didn't want to use it very often. Well, now you have a special meter in this version of the game that charges up. It's right next to your, uh, your health bar. And when it's flashing OK, you can press the A button and you can do your special without losing health. And uh, so there's there are going to be a lot of strategies involved in this playthrough relying on that bar. Also, pressing forward and A with Blaze here will do this sort of fireball uh, attack, which is quite nice. Uh, you're going to see me using that quite a lot over the course of the playthrough. Um, throwing is actually really, really strong in this game as well. So in the first level, what you can do is just really grab enemies and throw them or uh, just pin them down onto the ground, kind of like so. These guys right here with the bandanas, they're actually very dangerous uh, to deal with. They like to throw you as well, just like that. 
So I don't recommend trying to throw those guys. Um, but what I do recommend trying to do is just attacking them normally, just like so. So one thing I actually don't care about or care for in this game is enemies have a tendency of going off the screen a lot in this game. And you can't actually hurt enemies when they're off the screen. So you kind of have to just wait for them to, uh, to come back, and that can be a little annoying. But that's probably one of my biggest gripes with this game, is just the fact that enemies get knocked off the screen so much. Um, so one interesting thing is that this game actually also supports the Sega 6-button controller. And, uh, and so you can use your 6 buttons to, to play. Instead of pressing B and C together to do, say, a back attack, uh, you could just press Z itself, just like so. Also, most characters have these charge moves by holding down the B button and then just letting it go. So for Blaze, it's this uh, it's this kick to the face, just like so. Kind of satisfying, but not very powerful. But uh, instead of holding down B, you can actually just press uh, you can press the Y button, uh, which is quite nice. So yeah, no more uh, flubbing um, controller inputs by pressing uh, you know failing to press two buttons together. Also, one uh, interesting difference between the Japanese and North American version is you notice that this wall has been blown wide open. Well, there is no wall in the North American version. It's, it's just a huge open space. Uh, so that's an interesting change as well. And what I did just there is this guy tried to throw me, and I pressed up and jump. And uh, just like in the other Streets of Rage games, um, I landed on my feet. So that's actually a really, really important mechanic as well. Uh, I think you'll find, though, that you don't get thrown as often in this game as you will in, uh, you know, the previous Streets of Rage games. Um, but it's still really, really good to know. If you manage to, uh, land on your feet, you don't take any damage. And, uh, so one other thing that's really cool in this game is that, uh, weapons, uh, now have specials as well. And, uh, whether you, uh, use a special or not with the, uh, the, 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 the weapon, depends on your character. So with Blaze, she likes to use uh, she likes to use blades and swords and whatnot. So let me go ahead and throw this guy and kill him and I'll get rid of my sword. Um, so for the knife here, I can actually double tap and press uh, the attack button and uh, that'll do a special with that. And now I can also press forward in A just like so and I'll use that special. Now the only thing is weapons in this game have health bars now. And uh, so your weapons do break, uh, so you can see my dagger health bar up there. But uh, you know you definitely want to take advantage of your your specials with the uh, the sub weapons. So I think for Skate, uh, he deals with like bats and things like that. Um, with uh, with Blaze here, it's blades. So she likes knives. She likes uh, you know anything that's sharp. She can uh, she can do a special with. And, uh, this guy that's actually driving this boat, he's, uh, the boss that was actually removed from the North American version of the game. And, uh... And let's just go ahead and just combo these guys. So again, you can see my meter is completely filled. I press forward and A to do Blaze's fireball attack. And we can jump kick. There's another mechanic here that, uh, you can do by double tapping up or down. Uh, you can actually dodge roll uh, vertically. You can't dodge roll left or right or diagonally or anything like that, but this is actually pretty useful, uh, especially later on in the game. You're not going to see me using it a lot, but there are a particular particular few moments where I definitely will be using it. So one other thing uh, in this game is that every 40,000 points you get, you actually uh, get a star. So we're, we're a little over halfway to that, that goal. And you can get up to three stars, and... Um, stars allow you to uh, basically expand your your special move set. So when I double tap forward and press B, um, this attack right here will turn into a longer range version, and then it'll turn into this sort of backflip kick attack as well. And let's go ahead and land on our feet. And yeah, so this is uh, Ash. Here is the boss that was chopped out of the North American version of the game. And uh, you can actually play as uh, him as uh, one of the one of the hidden characters uh, via a cheat code. So go ahead and just combo. So kind of like uh, Streets of Rage one and two, you can actually do the stun uh, stun combo or stun lock your enemies by just sort of tapering your your standard punches. So you go punch, wait, punch, wait, punch, wait. And what that does is it resets your combo, and so your character won't do a combo. 
So this is actually a bad situation to, uh, or bad moment to uh, demonstrate it. So let's go ahead and just throw these enemies into each other. Throwing enemies into one another is actually really good in this game. Uh, because not only does it do a lot of damage to the enemy that you're throwing, but any enemy that gets hit by that guy um, will take a lot of damage as well. So throw her into her. And I killed her in one hit because I threw another enemy into her. And uh, this is our boss fight. This is our boss fight for the main level. So what I like to do in this guy, you'll notice how he'll hop on or hop back to the ground or hop up just like that. And uh, you can actually just uh, get him into a uh, jump kick combo just like this. One, two, and then, but unfortunately he goes off the screen and then you can't hit him anymore. So again, like I said, um, very aggravating when the enemies go off screen. Uh, most boss fights in this game also have some turkey. And, uh, so what I like to do is actually save that for, uh, you know, when my, when I really, really need it. So, like right now, I'll go ahead and grab it right now. Let's go ahead and use that. Wait for him to hop up, and then just jump kick him just like so. You can just do it over and over and over again. Um, there's gonna be one boss later on in the game where even when he goes off screen, uh, he'll still do an attack that just runs straight towards you, and so you can just jump kick him, just get into him, get him into an infinite jump kick loop, um, and that's gonna be the goal for some of the bosses in this game. Not all the bosses, but that first boss in particular, I definitely want to do that jump kick loop. All right, so we got an explosive right here, and uh, we've got more motorcycle guys. Uh, these guys appear quite frequently in this game. Uh, but I've got an explosive right there, and what you want to do is actually let it go. Uh, if you hold on to it for too long, it actually blows up in your face. And uh, so you don't want that to happen. These green motorcyclists, they always take more hits than the other ones. Uh, so you've got to watch out for them. I like to try to just jump kick them one by one. So this is the, the, uh, the stun lock I was talking about. You just time your attack to where your character's combo resets. And then uh, the enemies won't be fast enough to get out of it. And I just got smacked by that. Not a big deal. Uh, some of these guys, like the like the cyclists, they actually don't do a whole lot of damage to you, so it's not really too bad when you when you take a hit. Uh, but yeah, the stun lock I don't do that often in this compared to say Streets of Rage One. I do think it's a little more useful in Streets of Rage One um, because your specials are just so good in this game. So what I might do is grab an enemy. I do a lot more damage that way, and then try to do a special as he gets up, kind of like so. Just slam him down to the ground like that, and then combo him for the win. Let's go ahead and bust that open. There's an apple. Alright, so this is, in the North American version, the guy with the whip is called Bruce. Uh, he's not Bruce in this one, he's got a different name. And uh, if you want to play as the kangaroo as your, uh, your hidden character, his name is Roo in the North American version, and he's Victy in uh, this version of the game. Alright, just let me let go of him. You want to focus on the clown. So, what I like to do is just try to walk up to him and just throw him. Um, he likes to bounce all over the place and he'll dodge your attacks. So it's a little difficult to deal with. So, let's go ahead and... Just kind of stay over here. You'll notice that he's off the screen. I can't do anything to him because he's just completely off the screen. and He's not doing anything. So again, that's one of my most frustrating... One of the most frustrating frustrating aspects of the game, if you ask me. A lot of these guys just like to go off the screen. You can't do anything to them. And there we go. We just killed... Danch is his name in this one. Uh, but Rue or Victi just uh, goes off the screen. And then, uh, so after you... I don't know if you have to actually beat the game. Uh, or if you can just, uh, you know, get a game over. But as long as you save Victi... Um, uh, you know, I know for sure that if you beat the game, if in, and if you save him, uh, he'll be a selectable character. Uh, if anyone out there knows if you can just get a game over and then play as him, let me know uh, in the comment section down below uh, how that works. Um, but yeah, I've definitely verified that if you beat the game and save him, you will get to play as him. He's a pretty fun character with some, uh, some fun moves. Let's just go ahead and throw this guy back here. Um, kind of like Final Fight, um, you really want to focus on crowd control in there. So it's best to try to get all the enemies on one side of the screen as opposed to having them on both sides of the screen. And uh, 20 more thousand points and we'll get ourselves another star which will actually upgrade our Ford Ford B attack quite a bit to the point where it'll probably be broken. Um, <laughs> but it's fun. I'm, I'm totally okay with it. I'm not complaining. 
So I actually do prefer the uh, the balance of the Japanese version to the balance of the North American version. You can still get your star upgrades and whatnot, but it's way harder in the English version of the game. And uh, so much so to where I haven't even really been able to take advantage of those attacks when I play the US version. Because the game is significantly more difficult. You can bust open these chairs for weapons and whatnot. Go ahead and just throw that guy, and then I can go ahead and use my, my dagger special. This is an army knife, apparently. Now, what's really cool about using your weapon special is that it doesn't drain your special bar. So, the, the blue bar that says OK, that actually still remains charged. So, that's actually really cool. And again, you can throw your weapons just like in Streets of Rage 2. And these knife guys are quite annoying, so I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and just try to wait for this guy to come, and then throw him over like that, just to get rid of him. And then I just used my special. Remember, you can use your special uh, meter and not lose any health. And uh, so you definitely want to take advantage of that. Go ahead and just throw her this way. And let's go ahead and use our, our special. So Blaze has two specials. Uh, she's basically got that fireball right there. Just like so, or you can just sit in place and tap A, and she does this, you know, this uh, sort of whirlwind kick. Um, which is also very useful, it's actually very useful on this boss in particular. Um, so this is actually Mona and Lisa, at least in the North American version, that's what they're called. Uh, so they make a return from prior Streets of Rage games, and, uh, or at least part one. Were they in part two? I don't remember now. Uh, but what she likes to do is jump up at you and then uh, do a, a jump kick that actually basically targets you. And they also do these uh, these electrical blasts along the ground. So what I, what I like to do in this boss is try to uh, get underneath them as they're jump kicking. And uh, basically just punch them as they land. And then I can uh, combo into one of my specials. Now, in the North American version, their health bar is significantly higher, and so they are much, much more difficult to deal with, and they're more aggressive, too. So if you can beat these guys without dying on the North American version, or the Western release, uh, you know, I, I tip my hat to you, because it is, it is tough. It is very, very tough. So let's go ahead and just skip this part right here, a little bit of a story intermission. The story intermissions, regardless of the version that you play, uh, aren't very interesting if you ask me. Um, there's no music during them, uh, there's not a lot going on in them, uh, in terms of, you know, the, the slides that you see. It's, yeah, I think it's actually one thing that probably could have been chopped out of this version, and I don't think anyone would have missed them. Um, but it is something in this game, and uh, you can just skip through them. So one neat mechanic on this level specifically is, is these barrels fall down and you can actually punch them uh, if you time it just right, so just like that, and you can punch them into the enemies and it actually does a lot of damage. Let's go ahead and use my special on that guy. Those guys named Nasty in this version, again, the, the bandana guys, are uh, very tricky to deal with because if you let them get close to you, they will throw you, and uh, that can be quite aggravating. So I've got my second star, actually. Let's go ahead and use my special there. One interesting mechanic here on this level is that you'll notice that there's wind. Um, this actually pushes you. So if I just jump straight up like that, uh, Blaze actually gets pushed to the left. Now, the wind is temporary and it switches directions. So you have to watch out for that. There was also that, uh, that sign that uh, I uh, basically kicked open for some meat. And um, in the North American version, uh, it's very difficult to get that one because the, the barrels come down so quickly. Uh, let's go ahead and just use that. Get rid of that, that knife. And so now the wind is blowing right. You can see all the cans blowing to the right some, and some, some paper blowing in the wind like tumbleweeds. Uh, so any section in the game where you have pits, uh, I like to just try to throw enemies into them just to make life easier or just jump kick them like so. And unfortunately, this lady is, uh, taking her sweet time. Just like in the other Streets of Rage games, uh, if you hit- some of them, if you hit them, they'll actually kneel down onto the ground before they get up. And when they're kneeling down, you can't actually do any damage to them. Alright, so because we got our second star, this is actually our uh, upgraded Ford Ford B attack. 
There's gonna be a third, uh, or a third star that upgrades it even further. Basically, basically it'll do the, the first part, um, but then Blaze will actually die, dive along the ground as well. So, uh, this boss was actually kind of tricky at first to figure out, but all you have to do is actually just hit the walls. Each wall has its own health bar. Oops, I took a hit. I don't ever take a hit on this boss. But you just jump kick uh, the thing. You can also punch it and do whatever, but I prefer to jump kick it. And then I just dash back in the other direction, just like so. Jump kick, just like that. Jump kick. Jump kick. And then he slams into this, uh, this right here. And then on to the next section. Slams into that support beam. Alright, so this is uh, one of several elevator sections in the game. And uh, one new mechanic in this game that's actually kind of funny is that enemies can actually eat uh, your food. And uh, so you do have to watch out for that. I've actually had enemies steal my food multiple times. So what I usually like to do is just leave the food there, but on this level in particular, I like to just leave it in the barrel itself. That way enemies won't, uh, won't eat it. So I'm just gonna throw them off just like that. Throw them off. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that anyway, just to be safe. There's gonna be another turkey at the end, uh, right before the boss fight. Now, what's cool about this game is that if you fall off, uh, you don't actually die instantly. Now, it does take away about a third of your health. So, don't get me wrong, it's still bad to fall off. But, um... Blaze will basically, like, latch onto the, uh, the ledge, and then, uh... She'll, she'll fling herself back up, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, getting knocked off isn't as bad as it is in other versions. Here we go. Again, it does take away a lot of health. Um, but it's not an instant death like it is in, say, Streets of Rage 1. Alright, so we've got our, uh, third star now, and this is the end of my upgrade path. And, uh, go ahead and use my special, and I flew off, and that's our first death. That was actually a terrible way to die. I was expecting to get through this without dying. Um, this, this level, at least. Not the whole game. But, that's our first death. Not a big deal. Um, we'll, we'll, we, we might die another time or two. You know, as we progress, uh, through this game. But, uh, I don't predict myself dying too often, and that is just really cheap right there. That happens, you can't really do anything about it. If the knife guy knocks you off and you come back, uh, you'll land on his knife and just take another hit. It's very dangerous. So these are actually some of the most dangerous enemies in the game, the knife guys. Um, as they are in other Streets of Rage games as well. Something else that's kind of interesting too, you can actually control your jump in mid-air, which is something that you, I don't believe you can do in the other Streets of Rage games. So, again, Streets of Rage 3 has some neat uh, mechanics. So if you, like, try to do a running jump towards someone, you can actually fake them out and, uh, you know, turn in mid-air or move backwards in mid-air, which is actually quite useful. And I'm just waiting for this chick to come on screen and uh, she's just taking her sweet time. So, that really slows down the pace of the game, unfortunately, is enemies just, you know, huddling off screen, which is really aggravating. And there's another knife guy right here. Let's go ahead and use my special. And try to get him off the screen. I really don't like those guys at all. And that's my knife. So, I try to use the knives whenever I see them, and just throw him off immediately. So, I'm gonna have to actually use this, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that. I'm gonna have to go ahead and use this turkey right away. And, uh, so this is an Axel clone. This is actually a robot. His name is Break. And, uh, so what I like to do in this fight is just wait for my meter to charge up, and then just use that. And we're gonna be doing this just over and over and over again. You don't want to jump at Axel, because, uh, he uses his, um... Uh, he uses his uppercut. And, uh, that's actually quite, uh, annoying to deal with. You'll try to jump in, and then he will... Uh, he'll uppercut you. There we go, just use that. Now I'm probably gonna end up dying here as well. Now I could try to use my dodge if I wanted to. Uh, which is probably the better way to go about this. You know, when it comes to actually dodging attacks. There we go. 
I will say, I haven't recorded a Let's Play in like a month and a half. Uh, you guys get the, the uploads every other week, but uh, sometimes I have uploads planned in advance and, and ready in advance. And so this is my first Let's Play in a month and a half, and so I'm also kind of like tense here. I'm like, I'm not warmed up yet. I did do a practice run before doing this recording. Um, but I'm not as uh, sharp as I normally am when I do these Let's Plays. So yeah, we've already lost two lives, which is a bummer. I was hoping to actually maybe even get through this whole thing, um, this whole game without dying. Um, I made a couple mistakes in my practice run, but I was like, you know, I think I'll be fine uh, for the Let's Play, but no, we've already lost two lives. So, oh well. And I'm not intentionally trying to actually latch on to Axel here. Um, I'm not trying to latch onto him at all, but it's just happening automatically simply because, uh, you know, he just lands right in the blaze. And I can't do anything about that. And, uh, you know, I can try to mash the button and do a throw, but he just he just overrides me with his special. So, yeah, that was a, that was a pretty poor showing there, but it's okay. We'll get plenty of extra lives over the course of playthrough. And uh, one of the upcoming stages also has an, uh, a one-up uh, in the stage itself. You can just pick it up and, and grab it. There might be some other hidden extra lives here in this playthrough that I don't know about, um, but uh, you know, I'm sure you guys will probably point them out uh, to me, as you always do. So, so some of these guys do block. I like to try to throw the guys that, that block. Um, again, these bandana guys, pretty dangerous uh, in terms of, you know, their throwing ability, so I don't really want to get up to them and throw them. They do like to circle around you and, uh, and then throw you from behind. And I keep mistiming my, uh, my jump kicks. So notice that there's this, uh, this object that keeps, uh, flying by. Um... Uh, probably some kind of, uh, service, little, little service train. Um, you want to just get out of the way. If you look at the tracks closely, you can actually see, uh, where it's, or, uh, you can see which, uh, which set of tracks it's going to, uh, ride on. So it's, it's the set of tracks that it shakes more. So in that case, it was the bottom one. So you always want to keep an eye out on these train tracks. Otherwise, you'll end up taking a hit from it, and uh, you'll lose quite a bit of health from it, actually. So, there we go. This is where the uh, the dodge actually comes in handy, because you can quickly move up and down. Go ahead and just use my special there. So you really, really want to use specials in this game. Um, that's what that bar is there for, so don't go around just you know, not using them at all in your playthrough. The second it's charged up, take advantage of it, and then let it charge up again as you do other attacks. So, for those of you guys that are new to this game or thinking about playing it, uh, definitely take advantage of your specials. Um, there's one reason that the game, even the Japanese version, is a little bit busier than other Streets of Rage games, is the fact that you've got these basically unlimited specials. Um, that don't uh, deplete your health. Now they will deplete your health if you use them without the bar being charged up, but now it's charged, so I can go ahead and just use it. Just like so. Now because I died twice, I lost two stars, so I no longer have my, uh, my super awesome upgraded specials. We will get them back, um, but it is disappointing that I lost them. So let's go ahead and just jump kick these guys and then use my knife on him. Um, watch out for the bottom. And there we go, just like that. And I shouldn't have jumped there, that was a, a dumb thing for me to do. And there we go. So, uh, you know, enemies in this game are, you know, their aggressiveness is sort of denoted based on the uh, the color of their costume. So green guys have a tendency of being a lot more aggressive than guys that aren't green. And, uh, you know, different colors of different characters uh, will also indicate that they're more aggressive. So these black colored uh, dominatrix characters, they're more aggressive than, for instance, the, uh, the light teal or blue, blue ones. I had to just use my special there. Okay, so we actually got another star back. Uh, I did not hear it. It's supposed to make a, uh, a sound cue, but I didn't hear it. My sounds were probably uh, being overridden by some of the uh, the action. 
So same with these girls, uh, Rubby. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be Ruby, but they're called Rubby. I think they're probably more aggressive than the other ones. Yeah, so most of the character names in this game have been changed, if not all of them. Uh, in terms of, like, the enemies, I mean. Um, so that is actually quite interesting to see, um, uh, compared to the, uh, the Western release. I'm used to both versions, and so I'm used to both sets of names. Uh, so, a lot of these guys are gonna drop, uh, swords again. And, again, Blaze really likes her blades. Uh, he, she likes her sharp objects. And, uh... So, I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of using the specials for all those weapons that we get here. The weapons over the course of the game will start to have bigger health bars, so you can use them a little bit longer. And if enemies have uh, small bars of health, it's good to just try to throw them, because you'll just kill them in one hit. See, so just like that. Kill them instantly. One hit. And there's our first one. So, yeah, with the, uh, the katanas, you can, uh, double-tap B, uh, double-tap forward, and then press B, and then she'll basically just dash across the screen with it. It's a very powerful attack, does a lot of rapid damage, which is really awesome. So I don't recommend using this normally, I recommend just using your special, or the, I should say command move. We'll call it command move, like in fighting games, because you do have to press forward twice, then press B to do it. Now, when you're inside these, uh, these dirt areas here, you can't actually attack, but enemies won't fo follow you in. Those areas are there just so you can avoid the, uh, the, uh, the train tracks. Just like so. Now, you notice that that guy tried to throw me, and some of these ninja guys like to throw you. And, uh, again, you want to try to remember to hold up and press jump in the air so you can, um, so you can land on your feet and not take any damage. So this is your, uh, Miramasa. And it's got a much, much bigger health bar than, uh, the other weapons. Let's go ahead and just try to use that if we can. Let me just get up here. There we go. See, press up and jump to land on my feet. Come here, thank you. He's off the screen, so I can't do anything to him. There we go. And that's it. Now, unfortunately, unlike Streets of Rage 2, you can't carry your weapons from area to area. I thought you could do that in Streets of Rage 2. Man, it's been a while since I played Streets of Rage 2. <laughs> I did a Let's Play of it, I think, about... I don't remember if it was last year or if it was the year before. I do so many playthroughs on my channel that uh, a lot of it all just blends together, and I forget details about specific, uh, specific games. Um, but I'm pretty sure you could carry your weapons from area to area in Streets of Rage 2. At least I thought you could. But yeah, anyway, this is our, our boss fight for this level. Uh, it's a three-phase boss fight. They all pretty much do the same thing, except they have a final attack. Not final attack, but a special attack that is unique to them. So that attack right there, they like to bounce back and then dash forward with their sword. When they do that, I like to get up and just do my special, my fireball special. You notice that Blaze's fireball special just has a, a lot of reach. And so that attack right there, where, uh, you know, he splits into two and does two sword attacks, that's unique to this, this second phase. The first phase, the guy disappears and then appears either to your left or right. Uh, which leaves him wide open, actually, for a, uh, a good special to the face. And so I like to just try to get up and just slam him down to the ground like that. The throws in this game are just so good. They do so much damage. And there's a little combo right there. 
Do a one, two, three. There we go. This one goes invisible real quick. And that's it. And I wish I grabbed that turkey, actually, before the fight ended, but I thought there was going to be enough room to, to grab it uh, after doing... Uh, after beating the boss. But on this boss in particular, which is interesting, is, uh, you know, it, they go into a slowdown mode after you, you know, land your final hit, which is kind of interesting. All right, so we're making good progress. We only have uh, a couple more levels to go after this, and, uh... I'm gonna go ahead and just throw this guy over there, throw him over there, just like so, get some crowd control going. Throw him down like that. Another set of enemies right here. Let's go ahead and use our special. And then try to just run back and forth with that. Look at how look at how much damage that does. And then that's it. Way more enemies to deal with in the Western releases. And this was the level I was talking about with the extra lives. And these guys like to block your attacks, although you have to be careful with getting up close to them because um, they do like to kick you. And uh, so you'll be you'll be jumping in or you'll be trying to do a combo and they'll just kick you. So I got my third star. And uh, which means I'll be able to uh, slide along the ground when I do my forward forward B command attack, just like so. And as you can see, they can even block your specials, which makes them, uh, definitely a little bit trickier to deal with. But one thing that's kind of nice, and it's a nice feature, is that, uh, they do take- they take chip damage, as we would call it in fighting games. So they block, and they still take a little bit of damage. That's called chip damage. So it's not like, say, Final Fight, where the enemies are just completely immune to your- to, to damage when they're blocking. In this, you can still do a combo against them and still feel like, okay, I'm making progress on this enemy. But that's also why throwing them is pretty good, too. Because you can override their blocking. If you get into a combo with an enemy, you can go ahead and use your, your special uh, to get out of that combo. I'm still a little weak at doing that, like, I, they'll hit me four or five times before I realize that I can do my special. Let's go ahead and try to get this guy over here, just like so. Get them all into the, uh, the same side of the screen. Again, crowd control. But at this point in the game, with three stars, I can try to be really aggressive. And just use my, uh, my command move. Boom, just like that. It does so much damage. No knife for you. That's my knife. Go ahead and use the special knife. Let's get this guy... Oop, wrong way. Wanted to throw him this way. But yes, throwing is insanely good in this game, because it does so much damage, not just, again, to the enemy that you throw, but the enemies that get hit by the guy that you throw. And Blaze is my favorite character to play as, because she'll throw enemies pretty much all the way across the screen, very much like she does in Streets of Rage 1. Now, I never actually messed around with Blaze too much in Streets of Rage 2, I'd always stuck with Axel. Um, but, uh, yeah, I did play as her quite a bit in Streets of Rage 1, and, uh... Yeah, she would just <laughs> throw enemies all the way across the room. You gotta do the back throw, though. If you do, um, if you just do, like, the body slam, or you just slam them down to the ground, uh, you won't do any throw damage to other enemies. You wanna throw enemies into each other, that's the key. And to do that, you press back and B when you grabbed an, uh, grabbed an enemy. Let's go ahead and grab that just in case. Throw him like that. And mess up. Just do the stun lock, and then use my special on him. See if I can just grab him like that, just like so. There we go. And again. 
and then we'll just use my special. Oh, he didn't... You know, what's interesting is I think these guys don't take chip damage when they're on their final hit. So you have to watch out for that. You can't just cheese them um, and have them block your attacks and then still die. Uh, that doesn't seem to really happen. Now, when they grab me from behind, uh, you can actually end up throwing the enemies overhead, which is really cool. So, this box here actually has some more chicken, and I'm not gonna open that. I'm gonna try to leave it there, so I can use that uh, later on in the fight. This elevator takes us up to uh, Mr. X, and actually it's a fake Mr. X. Mr. X was the, uh, the villain in the previous Streets of Rage games. Um, that was weird. That was... Certainly weird. I've never seen that before. That was odd. <laughs> that was quite, quite odd. But yeah, this bat actually is pretty decent. It's a metal bat, so it actually lasts a little bit longer than some of the other ones. But I want to jump kick these uh, knife guys. And then just use my knife special. And it looks like they actually opened up that box. I'm going to go ahead and take it, because I don't want the enemies to take it. So even though we died a couple times, we're already up to, uh, you know, back up to five lives, which is nice. Making progress, though. Making progress. You really see how, like, you can just keep your strings going in this. It's just very satisfying to do some nice long combos. Have your special charge up, then, you know, unleash that into a group of four enemies or more. Very satisfying stuff. Yeah, I was actually really surprised uh, to hear the... Um... Just the... all the negative opinions about Treats of Rage 3, but... I kind of understand where people are coming from. Like when you, I started with the Japanese version here, and so the game is, like I said, way more balanced than the North American version. I think that's where a lot of the complaints come from. Is the Western version is just way too hard for its own good uh, for most players. Even if you uh, lower the difficulty down to easy, I read that you can't actually even beat the game on the on easy mode in the the Western release. Um, so even if you try to make the difficulty a little more manageable, you get punished for it. Um, but that said, I still think the, the North American version is a great game. It's not for everybody, uh, due to its high difficulty. But it's got all the same quality traits, uh, you know, that this version has in terms of its actual gameplay. You know, all the mechanics are identical. Your, your specials, your running, your stars, uh, all that stuff is still the same. All the boss patterns, pretty much the same, uh, except they are more endurance battles now in the Western version of the game. Uh... So, yeah, I've actually, you know, I'm glad I finally played this game, much like I finally put time into Streets of Rage 1. Um, it is a uh, very solid game, rever uh, regardless of the version that you play. Um, so... And, uh, yeah, this is our faked Mr. X. Uh, he's a little bit different than he is in the, uh, the other Rage games. As you guys will see, uh, he basically turns into this uh, sort of Terminator-like robot. And he's got a bunch of long-range attacks, and uh, he's got a, a homing rocket attack. And you're basically locked into place right now as he transforms. And when he does that laugh, you've got a, a few moments to just get a free hit on him. Go ahead and use my special there. I like to use my special to try to get around that, uh, that missile. And if he gets close to me, I like to use my special. I went ahead and used the second special to try to get rid of that missile. I don't think I can just jump kick him over and over. I don't know, maybe I can. There we go. 
My special was charged completely, so I didn't take any damage from that. Although I took some damage from that, that sucked. I try to save my special for when I really need it. Okay, that was not good. There we go. Alright, so still did it without taking a loss of life, which is good. <sighs> but I'm still learning this game. I beat the game for the first time literally a week ago, uh, as of doing this recording. And I've since gone back and beaten the Japanese version about four times since. Um, and then I've played quite a bit of the US version too, because I wanted to see if I could... The Let's Play the, the US version of the game, because I've Let's Play Treats of Rage 1 and 2. Um, so, I kept going back to, to, to the Western release to see if I can, uh, you know, get better at it to Let's Play it, but... While I'm improving at the game, it's, uh, it's slow progress because it is a lot more difficult. So I decided to uh, Let's Play the Japanese version first, and maybe in the future if I get better at the English game... Oops, he's gonna blow up, and I took some damage. If I get better at the Western release, uh, maybe what I can do is do a live stream of it in the future. Alright, so we have switches here. We want to go down two floors. So we actually just attack this, uh, this upper switch. And what we want to do is go into the second door on both floors we have access to. And the doors open up when we kill these guys. Now this is an interesting part. There are actually two ways this can go. Uh, if your timer runs out here on this level, um, there's a general that's uh, held captive that'll actually die. And then, uh, you'll go to a completely different level. You'll go to the White House. And, um, where a, an imposter general has appeared, apparently. And, uh, and the game will take a different route, you'll get a different ending and whatnot, which is kind of, kind of interesting. Um, but we're gonna take the, uh, the normal route. Uh, but what you have to do is basically, uh, go into the second room of each floor, destroy these computers, and then that'll un unlock a, uh, a barrier that'll let you save the, uh, the real general. And as long as you save the general, you'll actually go fight a robotic, another robotic Mr. X at the very end of the game. Um, whereas if you don't do that, Mr. X, Mr. X gets away, and you'll get yourself a different ending. So these enemies reappear, and I don't think I can do anything about them. Um, or I don't think I can, uh, skip them. I have to actually fight them again. So we're gonna do just that. Let's go ahead and grab this, just throw this at them. I'm gonna do this again, actually. Just waiting. And he blocked my attack, so I wasn't able to kill him. Just like I was talking about earlier. Elevators uh, open again, so we hit that switch. And then we just bolt to the right. Some more uh, fat men in black style characters. And this is the barrier I was talking about. There we go. They're called silver and gold in this version of the game. They have more generic bad guy names than the, uh, the western version of the game. Alright, so that's door number one, and we go to door number two. These doors aren't labeled, unlike the doors down below. Now, I haven't been able to actually use the, uh, you know, the bomb there on the, uh, the computer. I've tried before, but it doesn't seem to do anything. So you really want to use that bomb on the enemies if you can. Alright, computer's done. Throw him, just like that. Do a lot of damage. And destroy them. Oh, there's another one. Alright. Alright, so these boxes reappear. 
Uh, I think on this one now, I don't actually have to hurt these guys, because the barrier's down. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this, and then... We have just rescued the general. The most bearded guy in the game. So, this is probably one of the toughest parts in the game, this boss right here. Uh, you don't want to get near him to throw him, because he will just throw you. So what I want to do is just try to use my specials over and over, and then jump kick where appropriate, just like so. And if he goes high into the air, I don't really want to do anything. I don't want to follow him, because uh, he's going to dive down. Just like that. Let's go ahead and grab that meat. The collision detection on these, uh, the black jet guys, very annoying. It's very annoying. As you can see, like, earlier I jump kicked over one of them and I still got hit. Even though it clearly looked like I shouldn't have taken a hit. Oh, see, he grabbed me. I was trying to use my special, but he grabbed me before I could actually even do anything. So that was fairly cheap as well. There we go. When he's low enough to the ground, you can punch him. You can punch his feet. He's almost dead. And he threw me. Go ahead and use my special. There we go, we got it. Only one life lost that time. I think the last time I fought him, I lost two or three lives, which was pretty bad. Uh, so, you know, even though the Japanese version of the game is a lot easier, it's, um... There are still some tough parts in the game. That boss in particular is one of those tough parts. Alright, and there's Adam. And let's go ahead and just skip through all this. And on to the final stage. And again, if you did not save the general there, you'd go to a different final level in the game. There we go. Just wait for more enemies to spawn in. And those green cyclists, like I said earlier, you know, they have health bars. They usually take multiple hits. And one thing I like to do is just use my special and then throw other guys into them, which is pretty fun to do. Taking lots of hits here, but I don't really care because the cyclists, their bikes, they don't do a lot of damage. It's not a big deal. Come on, dude. Now you're just being annoying. You notice how, like, they just run off screen? It's it's a very, uh, very pansy thing to do. But you can't, you can't do anything about it, you know? If they jump off the screen, they jump off the screen. Yeah, I'm never a fan uh, of when beat-em-ups have enemies go off the screen. And it's not so bad when you can still hit them when they're off the screen, but you can't hit them. It's like a safety zone for, for enemies, and that's always aggravating to deal with. And there we go. Look at that damage. Crazy damage. Now this knife down here, it's, a, it's just like a dagger. It acts, ex acts exactly like a dagger. So I don't bother picking those up unless it's the only weapon on the playfield. But right now we've got, you know, our katana. And he threw me right onto a trap. So you don't want to hit those circles on the ground. Those are traps. And uh, you will definitely lose some health if you touch them. Just 
Just throw him backwards, just like so. You see how some of these enemies start to get pretty annoying later on in the game, too. It's just they bounce all over the place. Uh, so those robots combined with the ninjas are, are pretty aggravating to deal with. And more fake Mr. X's. So for these guys, I'll just jump kick them. Alright, get that turkey. I'm really just like zoning out right now. I'm not even focusing, which is why like my gameplay's not been as good these last couple levels. <laughs> my brain is just like, huh? How do you how do you record a let's play? I don't know how to let's play anymore. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is try to get back into the habit of uh, recording let's plays more often. And I'm considering altering my my stream schedule to where like I don't even have a stream schedule anymore. I have to think about it further. It's not something I want to just make a hasty decision on. Um, but I think my let's plays are more important than my live streams. Um, I don't think the viewership is as great on the let's plays, but I do get more valuable comments and whatnot, and uh, people find more value in these videos years later. It seems. And I also find that with the, the current Let's Play uh, setup, where I, I get a couple recorded, and then I upload them bi-weekly, and then it's it's a month and a half before I do my next set. Like, when I go to do my next set, I'm rusty, and it's like I have to get back into the groove all over again. Like, sitting here, playing a game at the same time, explaining the mechanics, and doing it by yourself in a room with a mic, you know, talking into a microphone to yourself is a little awkward, and it is something that you do have to actually practice. And it is something that you have to, um, you know, it's something that you've, you've got to warm up to and get used to. So, I might even start doing multiple uploads a week, or multiple Let's Plays a week, instead of doing bi-weekly. I'll do, I'll try to do weekly the best I can, but then I'll also sometimes even do more. Maybe I'll go back to the old days where I would do multiple Let's Plays uh, in a in a week. Um, depending on on what uh, what game it was and whatnot. But I don't know, we'll see. I have a lot of thinking to do. And uh, these guys are becoming really aggressive for some reason. I, these are some of the easier enemies in the game. The silver and gold, you know, suit guys. I don't know why I'm having trouble with them right now. Go ahead and just use my special there. Throw this guy over here. Grab that turkey because I'm not doing too well with health. Taking a lot of unnecessary damage. Fortunately, you don't have to deal with these rocket guys too many times in a playthrough. They can uh, they can definitely be a little irritating to deal with. Alright, so second to last boss. After this, we're going to be thrown right into the final boss. So we're pretty much at the end of the game. And uh, what I want to do is just sort of hold down and just move to the left or right. And uh, I really want to just jump kick this guy for max maximum damage. The jump kick seems to do the best in this guy. So, jump forward like that and then jump kick. Pretty basic boss here, not really too difficult to deal with. Although there is a second phase that is a little more challenging, but it's still not too bad to deal with. Let me get him all the way over to the right hand corner here. Boom. Okay, so now what I want to do is just bait him to one of the, one of the corners and then move. When you see it glowing with the green electric charge, you don't want to touch it. It'll do a lot of damage to you. And then speaking of damage, you don't want to touch those lasers. Uh, on the top. Those will also hurt you too and do lots of damage. 
And there we go. So this final boss here, we're gonna actually try to get him into a jump kick loop, just like we did with the very first boss in the game. And uh, this boss, you can actually push him off the screen and he'll always do the, uh, he'll just basically dive at you like this. And we just want to keep doing this over and over and over again for the whole fight. And I'm not going to mix up the strategy at all unless he does something different. But he's probably not going to unless I miss or do a different attack. So it's just all about staying focused here. Just like so. He's called Neo X. He's doing something else now. Let's do my special. Get over here. He always jumps at me like that. It seems like when you push him off the screen, he always does this jump attack. So it's one of the only times in the game where pushing an enemy off the screen is actually beneficial. So yeah, not the smoothest run, but uh, we still have six lives left over. Uh, we could have had probably eight or nine. I forgot if we died two or three times in this playthrough. Um, but uh, that is pretty much it, guys. We just beat Bare Knuckle 3, the Japanese version of Streets of Rage 3. So, really fun game. Really glad I fired this one up. Uh, thanks to all you guys out there that suggested this after I beat Streets of Rage 1. Uh, I'm still going to keep working at Streets of Rage 3, the North American version, because it is fun. It's very intense. Um, and uh, I do want to get better at that game. And uh, so we'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll come back with a follow up. Maybe we'll do a live stream of Streets of Rage 3 in the future where we try maybe just, just a, j like attempts at the game uh, to see how far we can get with one credit or, or just try to beat the game with the two credits that they give you. I don't know. We'll see. So, but yeah, great game. Uh, again, like I said, I recommend playing the Japanese version if you've never played this but want to give it a try. Uh, it's definitely the most balanced of the, uh, you know, the two versions available. And, um, but the, the North American version or Western release, I, I keep seeing North American, but it came out in Europe. Sorry, Europeans. I don't mean to, I don't mean to ignore you guys. It's just, I'm so used to just calling games Japanese or American versions because a lot of them didn't come out in, in Europe. Um, but Streets of Rage 3 did come out, uh, in Europe as well. So, uh, I have to call it the Western release of the game. Uh... But yeah, it, both versions are still fun. I recommend playing the game either way. Um, but if you have access to it, uh, you should play the Japanese version uh, first if you're new to the game. Otherwise, you will get wrecked. You will probably get wrecked. Uh, some of the modern ports of the game, though, like I believe on the Sega Genesis collection for modern consoles, uh, it actually has both the Japanese and North American Western releases uh, in the game. So if you don't have a Sega Genesis or you don't feel like emulating uh, Sega Genesis games on a PC. If you have that modern Sega Genesis collection, you do actually have access to both versions of the game, which is pretty cool. So you can just fire that up, play, fire up Bare Knuckle 3, and uh, you know, you can uh, play the easier version of the game. Uh, some of the changes in the North American version or Western release, I actually don't really mind that much. Like the, uh, the character costumes, their colors were changed and whatnot. Um, to me personally, like, I know some people see that as, sa as sacrilege, but it makes the game, it gives the game a slightly different vibe, and I think it's actually kind of welcome. Because Streets of Rage 1, um, and 2, uh, you know, Axel looked pretty much the same in both versions. Although Blaze was different in Streets of Rage 1. I think some people tend to forget about that. Um, and so changing up there, the colors of their costumes in the, the Western release, I think, uh, I think it was fine. But... You know, maybe I would have felt different if I played this game in 1994 when it first came out, but I first played it in 2020, um, so I, I don't really, uh, you know, it didn't bother me that much, but it is a complaint I see coming up quite often, um, and actually after going to it, coming straight from the Japanese version, I actually enjoyed it. I was like, oh, it, it lets the third one stand out even more from the uh, the two previous games in the series, and I think that's that's kind of welcome, so... Um, I wasn't a fan of how they did it in, say, Final Fight, but I feel like in Streets of Rage 3, like, they, they did it okay. You know, like, the, the character costume color changes, I think they were fine. Uh, and if you really, really don't like them, I'm... You could play the Japanese version of the game. 
But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much going to do it for us here, guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, you want to talk nostalgic about Streets of Rage 3, feel free to drop uh, you know, any uh, comments or feedback in the comment section down below. Uh, if you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Uh, if you found it useful in the slightest, or if you have friends that want to try to get into the game and you think that maybe a, sort of a visual guide like this would be helpful to them, feel free to share it. And, uh, yeah. Um, as of doing this video, Streets of Rage 4 actually has not come out yet. Um, but uh, now that I've actually beaten all three Streets of Rage games on the Sega Genesis, I'm actually really looking forward to it now. I wasn't all that stoked for it. Uh, but I am actually kind of uh, excited for it now, so I think that's due to come out sometime this year And you can bet that we'll end up doing some playthroughs of that on this channel. So stay tuned for that um, Streets of Raging isn't over yet though. I might try to tackle some of the Game Gear versions of the game uh, Which are kind of interesting, especially the first Streets of Rage, which is really really faithful to the original Genesis game and um, um and uh, yeah, so expect that probably sometime later this year. I'll try to tackle those games and uh, and let's play them for you guys. You can see both my my current run and my practice run there, uh, very similar scores actually. But one last thing I wanted to show off uh, before we actually leave here is that again you can play as Rue or I guess his name was it Victus in this version or Vic D. So there we go, this is him. So we'll go ahead and just select him and then just jump right into the game. Now, unfortunately, I haven't played enough to be able to show off his, uh, you know, to be able to show off the moves with his uh, star upgrades. Um, but basically tapping double, double tapping forward and then pressing B lets him do this rolling attack. Pressing A standing, he does the spinning attack in the air. And then if you press forward in A, he does this move right here, this 360. Which is uh, pretty fun. Uh, not pretty fun when he's doing it to you in the uh, the single player mode, but when you're playing as him, it is pretty fun. So, but yeah, that's Rue or Victi, which is uh, the hidden character you can unlock. Now, again, you can use cheat codes to get Shiva and Ash, uh, which I'm not going to show those off. But uh, just go to GameFAQs.com, check out uh, the codes for those if you want to try them out or try those characters out uh, in the uh, the Japanese version of the game. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you can unlock uh, Rue right away. Uh, you might need a Game Genie or something like that to unlock him from the start. Um, but he is on stage two, so as long as you you beat uh, you know the clown guy, uh, you can get him unlocked and then and then play as him. Nice little bonus character, uh, which adds uh, to the replay value of the game. One of the great things about the Streets of Rage games is the replay value from playing as different characters, because every character has a different feel, and uh, they have their their the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, their own unique strengths and weaknesses, uh, which again gives the game just great replay value. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for me, guys. Uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll be back with another Let's Play sometime very, very soon, either next week or the week after, hopefully next week. And uh, until the next one, take it easy.